Back here on the wheel giraffe engine compartment right side, same engine compartment on the right side also on our track and our quad track giraffe. This has the Cummins 3.8 liter QSV tier four turbocharged diesel engine, which is 130 horsepower. Some of the key components in this area to be looking at uh, right off the bat is the, the battery shut off switch. This, uh, you have off and on. When you cut it off, you're basically cutting the starter out. We're not cutting all the voltage, just the starter. Uh, we're still sending some volts to the computer. Also, for if you do have a dead battery, something happens, we got two quick areas that you can hook up your jumper cables, black for black, red for red, got covers. Another key area for the engine, of course, you want to be able to check your engine oil. That is right here, the dipstick. Pull it out, check it. Also, you can fill the engine with the oil right here. Uh, some other key areas, we do have uh, components that's on the motor, your alternator, your starter, your turbocharge. One thing to remember with a turbocharged engine, before you shut the engine off at wide open throttle, always idle the engine down for at least 15, 30 seconds to let that oil go back to the bottom of the engine, let the turbo slow down, then shut your engine off. Another couple of things, we got our fan blade right here on the radiator. This particular design, as you're cutting, is always pushing air through the radiator. Instead of sucking the air through the radiator like traditional cars and everything else, this one is designed to push to try to eliminate sawdust from building up in the radiator. But there's an occasion that it goes around the engine compartment and could suck some sawdust back in this way. So we have these panels on each side. With the engine off, take these panels and you can reach in and clean out the debris from either side of the engine. Here at the Cummins 3.8 liter on the left side of the engine, we got our oil filter, our primary fuel filter, and our water secondary filter. On the oil filter in the engine on a brand new machine, within 50 hours, you wanna do your first oil change. It has break-in oil from Cummins. So at 50 hours, we wanna go ahead and put that new oil filter and new 15W40 oil into the engine. And we provide you with a filter kit with a brand new machine, so you should have all your filters. On that water separator filter, you have a pitcock at the bottom that you want to open up about once a week and drain the water out. If you don't, you will get a uh, light on the computer saying you have water in the fuel from this little tattletale. When you're draining the water out of the pitcock, only three to four seconds is sufficient and then tighten it back up. Here is where you fill up the radiator. On the top of the hood is an access panel and you get to the radiator cap and you're able to fill up the radiator. Uh, we have, this unit, unit has four hydraulic pumps on it. This is the first hydraulic pump bolted to the side of the engine, and it only operates the air condition and heater unit. Now, changing the oil, there is a belly pan underneath that the mechanic can uh, take a few bolts out and the belly pan will open to get access to the oil pan. All our giraffes are equipped with these heavy duty door, engine compartment doors. As you can see, first it's got the fire port, so if you had a fire without opening the door, you're able to stick the fire extinguisher in there and blow the fire out. Second, it's a real thick, stamped out door with some nice flush mounted latches. To, with this unlocked, you're able to pull this, turn it, and open the door. When you close it, you're able to lock it, and if you want, you can buy a padlock, and you can padlock it here. It's like a double protection. Here is the heavy-duty bolt-on hinges. Got grease fittings to keep grease, but if the mechanic just wants to simply take the doors off, remove the bottom hinge, and then the door will slide off, and you can take the doors off. We're on the left side of the machine, and we pretty much covered all this on the right side, but just to touch a uh, little highlights, again, we have another fire extinguisher mounted on this side, lockable in a heavy-duty box. We have our articulating uh, steering here with our steering cylinder and grease fittings, our entry to get up on the left side of the machine with our handles and our steps. We do have our location to plug in the winch. It is located right here. This is how you operate the wrench. You plug the winch, you plug the pigtail in. This is our hydraulic oil cooler. And of course, we got some safety decals. Here at the back of the left side of the giraffe, we got some key areas of our upright, our turntable, gearbox, tilt cylinder, and so forth. So let's talk about some of this stuff. Right off the bat, we got our rotation gearbox that rotates the unit 360 degrees. As you notice, there's a grease fitting on the very top. We only want to grease it one pump weekly. This unit is full of oil, so all we're doing is greasing a little bearing, and there's a sticker here, grease one pump weekly. The uh, gearbox is bolted in with six Allen bolts, and then to get the backlash set, there's an eccentric nut. So basically with the, bolt, uh, the gearbox loose, they tighten the eccentric nut down, it pushes the gearbox against the bull gear, 
and then they're able to torque the bolts down. With, um, as we talked on the other side, the gear here, we want to keep dry, no grease. This bull gear on the inside has ball bearings and it loves grease. And that's what this grease fitting is here. We want to come up out of the cradle and have somebody rotate it as you're pumping grease in it to fill that gear, uh, that big bull gear up full of grease. It holds like three to four tubes of grease when it comes from the factory. Right here is your tilt cylinder. Tilts the upright left and right so you can level up. You got a grease fitting on the top, grease fitting on the bottom. Right here is our valve bank that operates the up, down, rotate, in and out, and so forth, steering. But what we've done is if you had an electrical issue but the engine still runs, you're able to get the threaded rod, a knob and lever out of the manuals, screw it in here and operate each segment individually to get it back in the cradle. So if you had to get it on a low boy or get it, off the, get it out of the road or something, you're able to do that by doing this. We definitely don't want to do this to operate and cut trees. Here's one of the LED safety lights we were talking about earlier. Front, two on, one on each side and one on the rear. Here's our hose reel. This is how it attaches to the upright. Goes up through the upright and then four bolts holds it on. We got our other rear uh, buckling points for the low boy. When you're loaded, you're able to run your chains and bind the unit down. Another key component of the giraffe is our boom cradle. As you notice, it's being reconstructed. This particular model, you're able to unbolt this boom cradle. If you ever did have one get warped and you needed a new one, you're able to order one from the parks department and bolt one in. As you see at the top, we have our slope meter, 25 degrees in the green. As you get into the red, you know that you're getting on too steep of a slope. Here at the back of the giraffe, we've got a couple of safety features. We got our backup camera, so when you hit the pedal backwards or the joystick, you're able to see what's behind you on the monitor inside the cab. Also, we got the backup alarm. It'll start uh, with a beep beep noise to warn anybody nearby that the machine is backing up. Also, in the wintertime, the backup alarm will also beep when you first start it up, indicating cold hydraulic oil. Once the hydraulic oil reaches temperature, the alarm will stop beeping and you're ready to uh, operate the unit. Here on the right rear engine compartment door on the giraffe, we got some key components we need to talk about. Right off the bat is the air filter for this Cummins engine. This unit has two air filters. First, the outer air filter, you're able to remove, clean, bump out the debris. But whatever you do, don't use an air compressor to blow it out. We don't recommend that because you could possibly blow holes in it. Now the inner air filter, Cummins recommends that if you remove it, replace it with a new one. Do not reuse the inner air filter. In the front of the air filter box, you'll notice an indicator. That's a restrictor gauge. As this filter stops up, that restrictor gauge fills up with yellow, and it's by percentages. Of course, when you start getting up into the 75%, it's time to pull it out, clean the air filter, or replace the air filters. Underneath the air filter, we got two batteries uh, the, uh, for the unit. This unit, like I said earlier, has four hydraulic pumps. We already talked about the first one that's on the engine. Now here's the other three hydraulic pumps. They're piggyback bolted to the back of the engine. Your first big pump is your drive pump that drives the transfer case, propels the unit. The middle pump operates all the other hydraulics, the boom, the dozer blade, winch, steering, and so forth. And then finally, the rear pump is strictly for the saw blade. It's dedicated. Uh, as you notice, we got a few other things. We got our hydraulic tank. We got the ECM for the computer for the engine up in the top. Uh, we got our exhaust, again, danger hot when it goes into a regen. Right here behind this, we have a fuse panel with some fuses. Here in the left rear corner of the engine compartment, uh, on this side, we've got our hydraulic tank. As you can see, we got tank indicators. Of course, we want this bubble completely full of some good non-conductive hydraulic oil. Uh, in this hole here is the indicator for the hydraulic filter. Uh, there's a gauge that has arrows on it with the engine running at 2,000 RPMs. As long as it's in, in the gauge, the in-tank filter is good. If it's in the red, the in-tank filter is stopped up. Inside the tank, as I just said, has a hydraulic filter in it. To get access, there's a plate up here on the uh, roof, four bolts, that plate comes off, and then you're able to access the hydraulic filter. Everybody asks what this little black piece here is. If you ever had a catastrophic failure and metal got in the hydraulic tank, the mechanic is able to drain the tank and then able to take this cover off and actually clean the inside of the tank out. A lot of our big hydraulic hoses has these gate valves. This is also for the mechanic if he has to ever do any hydraulic pump work or replace anything. He's able to shut the hydraulic oil off and be able to remove the components. But the main thing to make sure when you're doing your daily inspection, these are in the open position. 
If you have one of these clothes, you are going to starve your pump for hydraulic oil and possibly turn into a thousands of dollar repair. This little device right here is a flow meter. Uh, as you can see, it's got some uh, numbers, GPM. When, this, when the saw blade's on at 2,000 RPM, this fills up with hydraulic oil, and this white gauge with the black stripe goes up. It should be right below eight gallons per minute, something like 7.8 to 7.9 gallons per minute. Of course, if that was lower, then you would call your giraffe parts and service center and ask them what, uh, what needs to be done. We got our hydraulic oil cooler right here on the hydraulic cooler. Um, this is for of course, cooling purposes. You wanna make sure this cooler is always cleaned out, no debris, no blockage, because in the cab, you do have a hydraulic temp gauge, and if you ever get up to about 190, it's gonna shut the unit off. And the four main reasons why you would have an overheating issue, first is this cooler is stopped up with some type of sawdust or dirt or dust. Second, that hydraulic fan is not coming on. Uh, it usually comes on around 115 to 120 degrees, and if that fan's not working, the unit will overheat. The third thing, of course, could be a possible stoppage of hydraulic filters or you're low in hydraulic oil. Those are the four things to check right off the bat. We do have a few electrical components up in this area. Um, we already talked about our hydraulic pumps from the other side. And um, the um, also over on the other side, one thing we didn't mention was your DEF filter and your DEF pump is for the DEFs over there, and there is a paper filter that can be replaced as the manual requires it. 